This is a chapter 8 practice test for you on equations of lines and planes. So the link to this practice test will be in the description of the video and you can go and download it and give it a try and come back and see how well you did. So question 1 says determine each of the following. The vector equation of the line passing through these two points. So to find the vector equation of the line, we need a point and we need a direction vector. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the direction vector AB. And remember, that's just take the B coordinates and subtract the A ones. So I would get minus 10 and 8. So that means that the direction vector, or the vector equation of a line, sorry, would be 4 and minus 5. So I'm using the point plus parameter t times minus 10, 8, where t is an element of real numbers. Okay, so that's the first part. The second question, they ask you to find another point on the line. So to find another point on the line, it would be quite smart of me to give the parametric equations. So that means x is going to be 4 minus 10t, and y is going to be equal to minus 5 plus 8t. So using any parameter or any value for the parameter t here, I can find a number of different points. So if I said um, if t is equal to 1, then another point would be x would be 4 minus 10, which would be minus 6, and y would be minus 5 plus 8, which of course is 3. So minus 6, 3 would be a point, is another point on the line. Okay. You could put in any value for put in t is 2, t is 3, whatever you want. Okay, b, so this is a continuation now, determine each of the following. So it's not this equation, but it says the parametric equations of a line perpendicular to this and passing through this point. So I have a point, but I need to know the direction vector of a line that would be perpendicular to this one. So remember that the slope here for this, or the direction vector is giving me x, y. So that means the slope would be minus 3 over 2. So the perpendicular slope would be 2 over 3, which means x is 3, y is 2. Remember, this is rise over 1. Y is over 1, I always say, because it's y is over x's, right? So y is over 1, like Elmer Fudd would say. <laughs> So my direction vector is going to be 3, 2, and the point that I'm using is minus 7, 8. So that is pretty easy to do. I just have to plug in the point and the new direction vector, which is perpendicular to the old one, and t is an element of real numbers, and also they ask for the parametric equations of a line. So the parametric equations would be x is minus 7 plus 3t, and y is equal to 8 plus 2t. Okay, so there you go. Five marks already out of 40. You're not to a pass yet, but we're getting there. Number two, it says find the vector and parametric equations of the plane containing the points a, b, and c. Does this point lie on the plane? Six marks, okay? So you better be doing a bit of work for this. So remember, for the a plane, you need two direction vectors. There should be a comma here. I need two direction vectors. So I'm going to find the direction vector AB and I'm going to find the direction vector AC. So AB is B minus A. So 2 minus 1 is 1 and minus 3 minus nothing is minus 3 and 1 minus minus 3 is 4 and AC I'm just going to tell you what it is. You can do the subtracting on your own. Okay, so now I have two direction vectors and I'm going to give you the equation of my plane. So the equation of the plane is going to be, I'm going to pick this point here. You can pick whichever other one you would like. Just make sure you have the right sign with it. Always be careful. And then I'm going to have s, parameter s times this first direction vector and parameter t times this direction vector and s, t are elements of real numbers. So 
the question is asking me, oh, first you have to find the parametric equations for obvious reasons to answer the second part of the question. So that means x is going to be equal to, so I have um, 1 plus s plus 2t and y equals, well, it's 0, so I don't need to write that. So I have minus 3s plus 5t. And I have z is equal to minus 3 plus 4s and 0t's. Okay, so does this point lie on the plane? The first thing you should do is look at these parametric equations to see, like sometimes you need to use two equations and two unknowns. This one, you don't need to do all that work because this one is already in such a simplified format that I can solve for s right away, right? I know that z is 1. I'm checking z is 1. So I'm going to say which ones I'm checking here. So z, that's going to be um, 1 is equal to minus 3 plus 4s. So 4 is equal to 4s, and s is going to have to be equal to 1. So if s is 1, now I can plug in here and solve for t in the first equation. So I'm going to say... Oh dear, I'm running out of pencil already. Okay, so I'm going to say x is equal to 1 plus s plus 2t. But the x I'm checking for is 5, right? So I'm going to say, okay, 5 is equal to 1. s is 1, so I'm going to plug that in. And this way I can solve for t. So 1 plus 1 is 2, bring it to the other side. Um... I would get, well, if I bring it to the other side, I'd have 3 is equal to 2t, so t is equal to 3 over 2. I probably chose the harder one to work with. I think the y was easier. It doesn't matter. Okay, so y is going to be equal to minus 3s plus 5t's, and y in this case here is 7, so I'm going to say 7 has to be equal to minus 3 s I said was 1 and t is 3 halves. So obviously this is not going to be equal to 7. So the point is not on the plane. Now for it to be on the plane, I didn't say on because I'm talking at the same time. For it to be on the plane, these t's, um, your s and t values would have to give you this left side equals right side here, right? So when you solve for S and T, plug them in. If it doesn't fit, it's not on the plane. Okay, let's go to the second page here. And I have, find the acute angle of intersection between, um, I'm trying to see why I wrote this here. This is a practice test for me here. Find the acute angle of intersection theta between this line and the y-axis. Okay, so the acute angle of intersection, remember we're going to use that sort of cos theta equals the dot product of the direction vectors over the magnitude of the vectors, right? Okay, so let's think about this a little bit here. The y-axis, what is the direction vector for y-axis? y-axis direction vector. So I want to know that first. I need both direction vectors. So that would be 0 and 1, right, on the y-axis. That's probably the, the key to being able to solve this properly. Oh, not on the page, sorry. So 0 and 1, the y-axis direction vector. The direction vector of the line, well, that would be these numbers in the denominator. All right, so 3, 1, direction vector of line is going to be 3 and 1. So the angle is going to be the magnitude of the dot product of these direction vectors divided by the magnitude of the direction vectors. So in this case it would be, um, well this is 3 squared plus 1. So I'll, I'll write it like this first, just to remember where I got these numbers from. So 0 squared plus 1 squared. 
Okay, so the dot product here, that's going to be 0 plus 1. So I have 1 over, this is going to be 9 plus 1 is 10. The root of 10 times the root of 1 is the root of 10. And so theta is going to be equal to the inverse of this, 1 over root 10. And that comes out to about 71.6 degrees. Okay, question number four. Find the acute angle between this plane and this plane. Find the acute angle between the planes. So I need to know what the normals are, right? What are the normals for these planes? So normal one. Remember, you read it right off here. Four minus three, one. So four minus three, one. And normal two is going to be two minus five and zero. Don't forget, there is no z, so it's a zero. So same equation here. Actually, this was kind of a redundant question after doing the one above, except this one was for a plane and the other one was for a line. But same work, right? Same work. So I do the dot product, the absolute value of it. Remember, it has to be positive and over the square root of the, uh, so this is 16 plus 9 is 25 plus 1 is 26, and the magnitude of this normal would be 4 plus 25, so square root 29. And that comes out to 23 over the square root of 754. Just like when I take these up with my students, I don't do every little step for you, but at least something to help you uh, see where where you might have gone wrong. Okay, so it's about 33 degrees. Explain why it is not possible to have the following. Why can you not have Cartesian equations of lines in R3? Well, the reason is that lines in R3 have an infinite number of normals. So there shoots out the window our ABC values, right? An infinite number of normals. And Cartesian equations need a normal. Cartesian, that's an A. Equations need a normal, which we don't have. Why can't you have symmetric equations for planes? Well, that's simply because we have two parameters, right? We have S and T, so you can't have a symmetric equation. Um, number six here, I don't know why I wrote this only difference. It must have been something when I was writing up my tests in the previous. You can just ignore that. It won't be on yours. Find the Cartesian equation of a plane containing this point and parallel to this plane. Okay, so we have x, y, z, and parallel to this plane, what is the normal to this plane? So this is going to be 3, 1, minus 4 is going to be the same as our a, b, c. And we have an x, y, z. x, y, z is equal to this point, so minus 3, 1, and 4. So we have ABC, XYZ, and we're trying to find our Cartesian equation. So we want AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero. And we have everything here now to solve for D. And that's all you need to do. So I'm going to plug in A. So A is 3, X is minus 3, B is 1, Y is 1. C is minus 4 and Z is 4 plus D equals 0. So that's minus 9, uh, minus 16, so that's minus 25 plus 1 is, um, what was that, minus 24. Don't forget to move it across before you make a nice statement and there you go. So therefore our equation is going to be 3X plus Y. Don't tell me I'm running out of red on this one, too. No, nope, there we go. Minus 4z plus 24 
is equal to zero. I'm gonna make a happy face there. Okay, so we're halfway through the test. Hooray, hooray. Number seven. Tests always seem so long, and then when your teacher takes it up, it seems so easy, doesn't it? Determine the Cartesian equation of the plane that passes through the point three, two, two, and is perpendicular to this line. Now this was kind of a little trick that you needed to think, like use your head here. So this is the direction vector for a line, <coughs> and we want it to be perpendicular. So the perpendicular to line, let's write that out here, perpendicular to line means the direction vector of the line is the normal for the plane. I'm going to write that out so you don't forget. It's good to write things. Direction vector of the line is the normal to the plane. So this was a much easier question than it sounds like. So that means that A, B, C... Ooh, I hate it when that happens, don't you? A, B, C is 5, 2, and minus 3. And we have a point. We want the plane to pass through this point. So that's my x, y, z. So x, y, z is going to be 3, 2, 2. And now all you have to do is find d. So back to the, what we did in the last question. ax plus by plus cz plus d equals 0. Plug everything in. So I have 5 times 3, 2 times 2, um, c is minus 3, times 2, plus d equals 0. So it's 15, 19, 19 minus 5 is 14, 19 minus 5 is 14, isn't it? 15, 4, and minus 6. It's 15, 19 minus 6 is 13, so we have um, positive 13 on this side, so D is going to be minus 13. So that means 5x plus 2y minus 3z minus 13 is equal to 0. Yay. Determine the value of k if the line is parallel to this plane. Okay, so parallel to the line, this is the... Um, the value of k, this, this uh, direction vector here is the normal, right? So that means that the normal to the plane, we have the direction vector, the line, and the normal to the plane. Let's write those out first. We have direction vector of line. And you can probably guess what we're going to do with these. Direction vector of line and 3k plus 1, oh, just 1, what am I doing, plus 3k, 1 and 1 is going to be the normal to the plane. And I'm sure you've been thinking about this while I'm writing it, it means the dot product, the dot product must be 0. And that's going to be how we're going to solve for that k value. So I have k, k, and minus 2 dotted with 3k, 1, 1 has to be equal to 0. The dot product, so we get 3k squared plus k minus 2 equals 0. And now we need to factor this. So I have a product of minus 6. Product minus 6 and a sum of 1, that's going to give you 3 and minus 2. Coefficient is 3, so reduce those. That's going to give me k plus 1 times 3k minus 2 is equal to 0. So that means k is equal to minus 1 or k is equal to 2 thirds. Uh, number nine, does the point 20, 0, and 4 lie on this plane? Okay, support your answer with appropriate calculations. 
the easiest way to do that is to write out the um, the uh, symmetric equations here. So the parametric equations, I'm sorry, I haven't done this math for a while. So x is going to be 1 plus 3s plus 2t and y is going to be minus 2 plus t and z is going to be 2s minus 3t's. Okay, we get that right off this equation. Now I'm going to check um, the point 20, 0, and 4. Is this on the line? So when y is 0, what's t equal to? Always look for like the baby equations like this, right? The easiest one to solve for. So y is equal to 0, so 0 minus 2 is equal to, uh, sorry, 0 equals minus 2 plus t. I was going to try to do it all in one step there. So t is equal to 2. So when t equals 2, then we have, um, we'll work with our x value here first. So we want x to be 20. So 20 is going to be 1 plus 3 s plus 2 times 2 because we said t was 2 so that gives me 4 and 1 is 5 subtract it that's going to give me 15 equals 3s and s is equal to 5. okay so now our last thing we need to check for here we need to find z so z put that one here so i have z is equal to 2s minus 3t. What's my z value? 4. And if s is 5 and t is 2, then this side had better be equal to 4, or that means, it doesn't better have to be, but it just means it will be on the plane. So you can see from my calculations here, 10 minus 6 is 4, 4 is equal to 4. So um, it's on the plane. Therefore, this point is on the plane, is on the plane. Okay. Okay, we're almost done here. One more question, two more questions. Number 10. Explain why the three points, A, B, and C, do not determine a plane. Well, the first thing we need to know is what kind of direction vectors do we have going on here? It's only worth three marks, so it can't be that hard, right? What's a, b? So b minus a is going to give us one, three, and four. And what is a, c? a, c is c minus a, so that's going to give me minus one, minus three, and minus four. So looking at these two direction vectors, you can see that this one is just minus one times a, b. So because, because a B because A B A B equals minus A C the uh, direction vectors we're just going to say that their direction vectors are multiples of one another which means that they are collinear which means they are collinear and cannot form a plane okay can not form a plane the rain in spain okay and the last question Determine the vector and Cartesian equations for a plane that contains the following two lines. Okay, so we have two lines and we need to find the normal to the plane. How do we find the normal to the plane with two lines? I think you know how and that magic answer is that we have to find the cross product, right? Cross product will give you the normal to the plane. Mm. 
Okay, so I'm going to do the cross product of these two direction vectors. So I'm going to write 2, 0, minus 3, 2, 0, minus 3, and 5, 1, minus 1, 5, 1, minus 1. Get rid of the outsides, make your x's, step right up, show your true colors here. So direction vector 1 cross with direction vector 2 is going to give me minus 1. Oh, I was get mixed up here. So we've got 0 times minus 1 is 0, minus 1 times minus 3, that's plus 3. That's going to give me 3. And this is minus 15 plus 2 is minus 13. And it's going to give me 2 minus 0 is 2. So that's my A, B, and C. So I have A, B, C. Just like we did in the other questions, so we're going to write out the equation. So we have AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals 0. And I'm going to plug everything in here. So I have 3. Now you can pick any number that you want. Well, the point on the line is the same one, so we don't have to worry about which one to use here. So 3 times 4 um, minus 13 times minus 3 plus 2 times 5, plus d equals 0, and that's going to give me 12, and 10 is 22, and 39, this is minus 30, oh, let's write it all out, 12 minus 39 plus 10, plus d equals 0. So that's going to give me, this is plus 39, minus a minus, ooh, that's going to give me 41, 51, 61 plus D. Don't forget to get it to the other side, minus 61. So that's going to give me 3X minus 13Y plus 2Z minus 61 equals 0. So that's giving me the Cartesian equation of the plane, but we also wanted the vector equation. So we have the vector equation, let's do that one here. So we have a point, so 4 minus, hope I leave enough room here. Okay, so I've got 4 minus 3 and 5 plus, and I'm not going to have enough room. Oh well, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. So we have s times one of the direction vectors is going to be 2, 0, minus 3. This is really quite easy, isn't it? t times 5, 1, minus 1, and just say that s and t are elements of real numbers. So I've got my point and my two direction vectors, these ones here, direction vectors. And there you go, there's your practice test. So hope that kind of helped to gel all those different concepts we've done in this section. And again, I will post um, a practice test for you at the bottom you can print it out or you can just stop the video and try the questions on your way so all the best hope all everything's going well for you bye for now